Question. Um, I have a question about scaffolding. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's a good idea for us as teachers to give our opinion. Tell me what. Tell me what situation. I don't know about situation, but I mean that's just what I was taught because then they don't really think for themselves. So I, I think about scaffolding and like I, I don't think that's a good foundation of like, hey, this is what I think. Do you agree or not? Because then they feel like they have to, and if they don't, then. It's not very comfortable. So I tell me why. What, this, is, this is what you've been taught. This is what you believe as a teacher. You know, I respect Both. all the teachers' opinions. Both. And why is it you don't want to give them your like? But give me a situation. Like, is it about the meaning of a text, a theme? Yes. You yes. don't want to give them your opinion first because right. I want them to think for themselves. And then after they give it, will you share? Like as Stephanie was saying in, during a debate. Yes. Saying, no, I yeah, for the most part, especially I mean, yeah, texts like we did today. We, we were reading Edward Allen Poe. I gave my opinion after they gave yeah. it. Yeah. Does anybody else have an opinion on this? Yes. Yeah, I was just going to say something similar that, like, if I say my opinion, they'll all kind of be like, yeah, that's what I think too, you know? And it's like. Who else has seen this? I, I've seen this, yeah, yeah. They, they, just, they want you to tell them yes so they can fill it in and move right. on to the next thing, yeah. I, I agree with you. you know? okay. I often will not. But you bring it up in this because why? Well, because Is this reminding? Uh, well, I don't think that's not a good foundation of scaffolding. Like, if I. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Well, like, <clears throat> I'll show this eye kind of like, for example, I just all my kids to be, yeah, this is, this is giving them the answer. You know, what's the theme, y'all? Okay, I'll talk to you. Now, listen, I want y'all to read in pairs. Uh, I'll, I'll read for you, you know? Yeah. Um, foreshadowing is clues, right? This is just, just my own as a player, right? Oh, I'm sorry, maybe that's my only classroom and my own experience, right? This is, you've got to do the work. Uh, for, what is foreshadowing? Look it up. You know, and, all right, reread this one. Reread, no, no, literally reread it. Read it to me. Okay, what'd you do? You know, and then, and then what does that lead you to believe? And so what do you think it's mean? That's what I consider okay. the scaffolding. And just, and then like, to be honest, everyone, I think it, we all start with those expectations and then, right? Like they're constantly challenged, right? In classroom, whether it be behavior, whether it be, am I gonna give them the answer? Or am I going to let them struggle? Who in here, you know, has had the biggest breakthroughs when you're struggling, like as a student, and you gotta do it on your own? All right, that's what you did. Usually, how about any make mistakes? Anyone learn from their mistakes from the past? How about this week? Does anyone learn from a big, okay, I didn't want to get too personal here. All right, let's see what we got. All right, my objectives are to choose the most strategic during reading method to engage students with the text in order to achieve the takeaways and plan for effective implementation. Where does it fit? Right here, chunking the text. Man, we've got this. Who feels comfortable about chunking the text so far? I know, I should stop here, I should stop here, excellent. Um, student takeaways, this is what they need to get. I have my BFF, I have my best friend for life, right? I got my text overviews, these are the takeaways. Now, how are you gonna get there? For example, how much support should I give students? Who's struggling with this one? How much support should I give them? How do I decide that? How will students track their thinking? What am I gonna have them doing? Who in here is still wondering, what am I gonna have them doing? Is anyone seeing students getting a little bored with the fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank? Okay, okay, that's what we're here for today, to get some, some new methods going. Okay, I got my opening and my do now done. I'm going to go on to my teaching, making the right choices. Teacher number one. All right, me teacher number one. <clears throat> Not seeing your students draw out meaning through what the characters say and do, nor is she seeing them reread the text. Who in here is seeing students that don't want to reread? They don't want to, they say, oh yeah, I remember this. They write it down. They don't want to reread, find details. And in other words, they prefer to ride the escalator instead of climbing the scaffold. Do you want to have other have students? I used to mess around and talk You read. Mr. Winchester, you know, like when it's their turn, it's like, no, no, you read. No, I used to tell them, no, no, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good reader. And I was often, they said, what are you trying to say? Nothing, nothing. I just want you to read. You know, I to read. But they would love, say, yeah, you read. I love that voice. All right, this is what I need. I got a ton of text on this, and I apologize. There's no way around. We're going to take a look at a sample lesson plan to see why a teacher chooses specific things. They are reading um, a great short story called Jeremiah's Song. By Walter Dean Myers, part of the sixth grade summer curriculum. You need the background about the story, you need the theme, and you need how he conveys the theme. So please take a few minutes to read this one, and then we'll be looking at how a teacher tries to come up with the most strategic choices to get the students engaged. I actually love these methods. I'm trying to set you up for success. <coughs>
finished reading. Can you look for teacher number three? I realize it says teacher number one up here, but I have to reorder. In your folders, I'm pointing where I got week three literacy, second week during reading the handouts. Can you, there was a folder that said teacher number three. That's what we're looking for. I realize it says teacher number one up here, but the handout is labeled teacher three. This is the first one I have to go through. Teacher three. We're looking for a lesson plan. It'll say, I believe it'll say JS for Jeremiah's song. Thumbs up when you find a lesson plan for teacher number three. I got one up here, two up here. LP should be day four. Is it day four, Connor? Um, is yes. it labeled there? Yeah, day four. Okay, so let's see. Day four objective. Let me pause on this one. The real meaning. So the story ends. Unfortunately, his grandfather dies. You got a narrator who's trying to figure out all these songs his grandfather used to rely on. Are they really worth something or were they just junk? And that narrator has two opposing viewpoints, two different characters. Ellie and Megan have two and the narrator is trying to make up their decision. This cultural heritage that the grandfather is trying to pass on, is it worth it? Okay, we've got teacher number three, day four LP. And this is what we've got. We've got a takeaways. I'm going to draw this out. We've got purple takeaways. You find the purple? I think they're on page four of the lesson plan. I realize that it is... I'm going to have you read every other word backwards. I'm kidding. Did somebody say it was 25 pages long? Yes. Everybody got handouts? They got handouts in there. 